Hey guys, it's Stephen here, back with another video. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. It's a first day of the day after Manchester City's 1-0 victory over Sheffield Wednesday. Normally on a day like this, I do a five things learned, but... I don't really think there's that much to take from it, to be honest. Go watch the match reaction video if you want to. I did a live stream as well during it. But it was the kind of game that you just forget about and move on from. But before I get into today's video, I want to say thank you as ever to One Football for continuing to sponsor this channel, continuing to be awesome. It's a wonderful app with loads of wonderful features as well. You can follow Manchester City News on your phone. So you can sit there when you're at work and you're like, what's going on? And you'll get a notification, a buzz away, and you'll be up to date with more than Manchester City News. So go download it right now. I also want to say thank you to my latest Patreon, Hovani Rias. You're an absolute hero mate hopefully I pronounced that correctly but uh, Havani's got involved on um, my Patreon which is huge it helps keep this channel going it helps support this channel and also there's going to be some bonus videos the first bonus video is already out about Phil Foden but there's going to be loads more so patreon.com forward slash the Steam company if you want to get involved and help support this channel bro thank you so much Havani uh, for your wonderful support fingers crossed I got the name right but let's move on to today's news and it's been a bit of news knocking about actually some genuinely interesting stories today because it's never quite in the wonderful world of Manchester City Football Club. I'm going to start initially with Mr. Kevin De Bruyne. Now, Guardiola did actually say afterwards that De Bruyne missed yesterday's game because there was an injury concern, which is terrifying because it's Kevin De Bruyne. And immediately when someone like Kevin De Bruyne is out, you start fearing the worst because why wouldn't you? Once again, it's Kevin De Bruyne, the man that is basically our best player. He really is our best player these days. And that's almost indisputable. Thankfully, according to a good friend, um, Asan over at 9320 Pod, he got some breaking news today and he's kind of put on his podcast, which we recommend to listen always because they're very good. But he said apparently it's just um, a shoulder injury. And apparently he's got a little bit of a, a tear or strain in one of his ligaments around his shoulder, which isn't seen as too serious, thankfully. Because uh, I'd be very worried if it was. But it looks likely that he still could be in, ten uh, in detention for the weekend. Now, we don't know whether he'll see, deem it a little bit risky and maybe see it out the weekend and maybe come back for Arsenal or even maybe just rest a little bit longer for the Madrid game. It looks like it's nothing too serious and we don't have to worry about it all too much because when you hear someone like Kevin De Bruyne going down, well, that is a worry. Now, I largely do think he wouldn't have been involved anyway, even if he hadn't had been fit because... Why would have been? It's Sheffield Wednesday. Uh, we've got to look after our best player uh, because he's too, too, far too important for our future hopes in the Champions League in particular. But it looks like we should be okay on that front. That's obviously a little bit exclusive from ASAN over the 9320 pod. But um, I thought I'd share that news with you. So fingers crossed he should be okay. And if he's out, it'll be a game or two at very much. At very much, at very most. Very much. That doesn't make any sense. Secondly, um, Leo Sane. There's a little bit of news today from Mike McGrath over at the Telegraph, and apparently he said that Leroy Sane is considering staying at Manchester City. Mike, if you're watching this video somehow, do not toy with us like that. Please don't play with our emotional little blue hearts, because the idea of Sane rocking up at Manchester City next season... Oh, it'd be wonderful. But um, I'm not surprised by this, actually. In my opinion, he's kind of gone quiet on the buy-in front, really. It feels like... Um, they're slightly distancing themselves from this. I don't know why or what the reasons are. I would hazard a guess... Um, that a lot can change in football. So sometimes when a player's had a bit of time out and all that kind of stuff, you spend a bit of time thinking or uh, plans change for the other clubs and you just never know uh, whether, whether a plan from 10 months ago will be the same for the plan in the summer. And I reckon Bayern are looking at maybe the emergence of uh, Alfonso Davis or something like that thinking, well, maybe we don't actually need Sarney anymore. Maybe we don't. And that wouldn't be a bad shout either because I know he's like been playing left back, but he is a winger by default. Apparently, he's got loads of pace, loads of skill, and they might think, well, we don't need to drop a hundred million on him. And the idea of Sarri staying at Manchester City could be um, the fact that maybe he just starts to think, well. City have stood by me for ages. They are incredibly loyal to me um, and I've obviously got loads uh, loads to improve and develop and maybe my missus and the mother of my child wants to be here still. I think Sarney probably realises that City have looked after him a lot. Now, the contract has been on the table for such a long time but the idea that Sarney maybe is considering it, I'm not surprised by that because it's only natural when you have that amount of time, your opinions start to change, you start to mature a little bit um, and hopefully <clears throat> if Sarney comes back and I'm sure he'll be ready in a couple of weeks or so, Hopefully when he's back and he starts playing, maybe he'll start to realise how much this fan base loves him and how much he can achieve and accomplish here. Who knows, maybe a big one in the Champions League and hopefully if he gets a little bit of involvement, you might think, well, sometimes it's better the devil, you know. Because if he's not fully happy here, but maybe, you know, would he be happier anywhere else? That's the big question. It's not about if you love it here. Sometimes you're like, is it really greener on the other side of the grass? Um, and there are some question marks allegedly from some people are buying whether Sadi's got the mentality to handle the pressure that comes with life as a German superstar 
at a club like Bayern. Now, I think you'd personally be fine. Hopefully, they're not watching this video. But those kind of bits of information are usually kind of leaked to the press to suggest uh, or to help a club distance themselves and maybe discredit his potential just to make it look like, well, we did want him, but, you know, maybe he's not good enough. No, that could also be nonsense. And the likelihood of Sarni staying is still, I would say, pretty small, but you never know. Um, you never know. And this news today is interesting. I personally think you probably go still, but a little bit of food for thought there and maybe a glimmer at the end of the tunnel. And thirdly, looks like City are getting more and more and more and more powerful. The City Football Group want another club. Now, obviously, the City Football Group already have um, Melbourne City in Australia. They've got Montevideo City Talk in Uruguay. They've got New York City in the US. Mumbai City in India. Girona in Spain. Sichuan Juene. I can't pronounce that. Juene. In China, Yokohamas Marinos in Japan. And now it looks like they could have themselves a League Two club over in France. AS Nancy are allegedly the latest club... Um, that City have their eyes on. And this is pretty much going to happen, apparently. According to L'Equipe, uh, City are in advanced negoti negotiations with the club and apparently they've been underway for some time with talks as early as last summer. And that wouldn't surprise me. These kind of things, these takeovers, are not kind of thing that you just put together in a, complete, in a couple of weeks. Usually they're not, anyway. Um, and apparently the, the, president, the president has come out on record as well, the ASC Nancy president, saying, and this is a quote, the club sale is moving forward and things have accelerated and intensified with the City Football Group, who are very precise and meticulous in their analysis of the club. So, I mean, it's obviously going to happen, this. I mean, that's a pretty much as guaranteed quote as you'll ever get with these things. And it starts to think, well, why are City doing this? Um, I mean, the obvious one is having a club like uh, a club in the League 2, uh, obviously, who have potential to get up to League 1, um, but having a French, cl French club is huge for the potential outreach, uh, both... Uh, financially and in terms of playing uh, the playing potential they got there. Now, of course, they're only in League 2 at the moment, but you'd expect with the investment that they get from the City Football Group, they would eventually find their way back up to League 1. Uh, they've been up and down throughout their uh, history as a club, and maybe uh, this could be uh, the boost they need to get back at League 1. And now, in terms of playing, what that would offer, I guess it'd be another avenue for our young players to go there on loan and improve. Um being of a uh, entry into the very talented French market because obviously we know the French academies just churn out top class uh, potential and talent all the time and obviously the way that they play over there with it, it's a lot of physicality and a lot of pace and a lot of excitement a lot of energy French players uh, French base players tend to do really well in the Premier League so that's a on, on a on a technical level it's very useful on that front but there might even be more to it than that in general now um Apparently, there's been a significant increase in TV rights recently, and that would, of course, turn the heads of most people, but especially someone like the City Football Group. Um, if there's more money in the French game, the City Football Group will be going, well, <clears throat> for one, we enter the French market. Two, we get a place to place some players needs be, if needs be. We've got uh, Jerome in Spain, and we've got, obviously, um, we'll have uh, AS Nancy in France, which is a, a great bunch of options there. They've also got country uh, clubs all over the world, but this would be another entry into the European market. And also then they might think, well, if this uh, market grows and grows, we've got an early kind of placeholder there. The money could be absolutely huge for us, potentially. The City Football Group is becoming a beast. That would take you, let me just quickly count up. That would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight that would be the ninth club that city officially own or have parts of uh, shareholders in anyway because we only own a few of them fully but we're major shareholders in most of them um this train ain't stopping the city football group uh are gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger and soriano is a man to monopolize football it's terrifying for our rivals but what it can mean for Manchester City, obviously the, the figurehead, I guess, of this whole operation as a City fan, I mean, it's only going to be good for us because we'll watch more and more football. Uh, footballers kind of will basically be able to get the best of the best eventually, hopefully. And that's the kind of overall aim for this. Um, so that's just a run through of today's news. The De Bruyne injury there, um, fingers crossed, it's, it's nothing too serious. It doesn't sound like it is. Once again, thank you for 9320 Pod for the uh, the heads up there from Asan Naeem, who's a wonderful bird. Go follow him on Twitter as well. And Sane... What do you reckon? Do you think Sarney will stay? Um, fingers crossed he will stay. It's a big bit of news. And obviously the AS Nancy negotiations, uh, well, the inevitable takeover is going to be one to keep a very keen eye and interest over. Guys, I want to say thank you as ever to all the support recently on the channel. Seriously, I know I say this a lot, but hand on heart, it's been overwhelming. About two weeks ago today, I tweeted that I was going full time with this and um the response has been fantastic. The support on Patreon, the support on the YouTube memberships, all the shares of the videos, all the people who followed my new Instagram and my new Facebook and my new uh, Twitter. 
you're, you're wonderful and I love you all loads, seriously. And also these guys here, scrolling down the side of the screen, these are the patrons that make this channel happen. And so the only way you can get through this is by all the support from these guys in particular because um, they're going to be paying my bills and hopefully making this full-time job um, good for you guys. So thank you very much to everyone involved. Love you all. Subscribe, like, comment, and I'll see you tomorrow for another video.